What is going on guys, Knights here and welcome back to another very special Mordhau video. Today I'm honored and privileged to announce that we are fortunate enough to have Kongle step on the show and do a masterclass series for you guys. Now we will be breaking this up into a multi-part series due to the fact that this game has so many advanced techniques that we don't want to cram it all into the same video. To give you some background on Kongle, he is a Tempest founder a Shiv veteran, a Venetus caster, an EFL recruiter, and a Twitch streamer. But most importantly, Kongol has done so much to better this community and help up and coming players reach their goals at making it onto serious competitive teams and better their skill sets all around. So if you guys are looking to learn, pay close attention to this lecture, and I hope that you will benefit from it in some way. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and dive right into this lecture with Kongle and I hope you show the man some support. Drop him a follow on Twitch, I will be linking that all in the description and I hope you guys enjoy the video. With duels, something that is very important is knowing who has initiative and the safest position that you can be in is repost. If you are in a repost, that you, you shouldn't be afraid at all. If you swing at me, and I'm in repost, what are you going to do while I'm currently doing that, you know? There's not really much to do while I'm reposting. So if I repost and you go for a swing, like, that's kind of what I'm saying. You're not doing yourself any good. So that goes deeper and deeper as you get into these new timings that come with playing duels at a high level. You sort of have to figure out how people play and when they you typically swing like some people will get really close to you and they're just trying to make you panic parry and i mean that's something that usually works on lower tier players but especially if they do this too much you can tell that they're not swinging because their turn cap you know would limit them from being able to do that because see it gets severely less that's all about not losing momentum like, if you start by running towards them right as you've started the repost, you can kind of turn into it and you're going really fast by the time you turn around. For both heavy armor and light armor, I feel like it's, it's pretty easy to get happy feats off as long as you know when you're meant to be doing them. Because you have no business going for happy feet if I'm right here and it's my turn to swing. Trying to minimize the amount of body that they can hit is crucial. Because, like, if you don't really think about your hitbox too much, you don't really realize it. But, like, look at, look at my arm placement. Like, if you were to aim for my arms, if I'm standing straight up, you're going to hit my hands before you're going to hit anything else on my body. So if you're trying to go for, like, a long-range attack, the best way that you're going to be able to hit me is if you go for those arms that are come sticking out the most. So do you want to touch on positioning a little bit more? How would you go about footworking against somebody that's trying to pull off a lot of big drags on you? So if somebody's trying to go for a really delayed swing, if it's a horizontal swing, you can just run in the opposite direction of that swing. And a lot of the times, if they don't realize what you're doing, you're going to just get right past their swing. Like, they won't be able to hit you at all, and then you're going to have initiative, and they have way less stamina because they didn't connect with their swing. And from there, there's a good chance that they'll even take a hit. Alternatively, you can run into their drag if you know that they're good enough to realize what you're doing with your movement. And that way, they won't even be able to get a good drag off on you because of the fact that they can't compensate fast enough to stop you from running into their sword. And if somebody is trying to do an XL against you, you typically just want to run straight into their swing so that it's on your terms. You always want to recognize that you decide when a swing will hit you. Even with an overhead, you can jump into that swing and then that means that you're deciding when the swing is going to hit you. I think that's super interesting. So what you're saying is there's kind of an equal amount of manipulation when it comes to choosing when you can force to block an attack versus when your opponent is putting a lot of effort into manipulating their timing on the offensive end. There's kind of equal parts to that in the de defensive side of things. 
Yeah, exactly. I would say that there's a lot more to defense than a lot of people think. And the more you practice those little nuanced moves around your opponent's swings, you just start to do it subconsciously. So how would you say is the best way to defend against somebody that's going for these footworking techniques that you just talked about? Is there a way that you can compensate for that on the offensive end? You can either turn and do a backswing on him by getting him with the very beginning of your swing as he's running around from the opposite side of you. Alternatively, you could just swing directly into them, like pretend that you're going for the drag, but then you can just move your mouse to the left so that you will still connect through swing. And a lot of the times that'll result in a really big drag which is why doing the footwork where you run away from a drag is actually quite a bit more risky than just running into it. Alternatively, you could just follow your opponent with your sword slash your cursor so that they don't get off your screen. That way you actually end up getting an even bigger drag than you possibly could have originally, which is why it's risky to go for running away from a drag versus running into it if the enemy player knows what you're doing. Something that I want to go into as well is the Congolian backstretch. Because uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I do want to see more people use it because there's so many different ways you can use it. Majority of the time, the way I use it is to throw off my opponent, obviously, um, by, let's say you go for a default swing. Even if you hit me here, I'm going to chamber. Uh -huh. So, if I swing at the proper time, even if you miss, yeah, then you're instantly punished and you can't really do much about it. But if, you know, you do connect, then you get the chamber. So that's majority of when you're going to use that. A duck is more so used, like, last resort, like, I fall for this feint, and then you start another swing while I'm in the middle of this window of parrying. I can just duck at the very last second that it's about to hit me. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. But if it's up close, you're not really going to get matrixes off. Yeah. The only time you're going to get matrixes off at this range is if they go f for a very clear cucumber. If they're aiming straight for the top of your hitbox, uh -huh. that's the only time you're going to get away with it. And you have to time it right. Because if you do it too early, they can notice that you're doing it and they can just compensate. Gaining initiative is really the biggest thing about it. Um, like, there's some weird ones that I can do. Like, if you go for a swing on me right now, regular default. Uh, if I do, like, an XL off of the chamber, like, you can even do it again. Uh, I can do some really weird stuff with that. Uh -huh. Like you can you can get a really really good XL off of a chamber and it you know It'll throw off a lot of players because they're not used to it Definitely um, So yeah, I mean you can even include that with running straight at that like straight to their side which goes more into positioning uh, So like if you go for it Like that's that's about as fast as this thing is gonna get So from your perspective, you're always watching to see how many more feints they're doing, how many feints they're doing, mm -hmm. how many chambers they're doing, because that's right. worse off on stam than reposting. Yeah, and now that doesn't that doesn't even mean that you have to like sit there and have everything counted in your mind. I don't want this to seem like something that's super overwhelming. Cause typically you sort of get a feel for it because like you just think if they have done a mechanic that didn't work on you, that costed them stamina more times than you have, that's all you need to know. But I would say if there's any one that you would want to learn 100% like beyond any of the others, it's being hyper aggressive. This is a philosophy that I apply to all games that I play competitively play as aggressive as humanly possible and slowly back up like slowly calm down 
to where you're not doing stupidly aggressive plays anymore, but only the like highest aggressive plays that you can get off without dying. So like you'll slowly start to learn like how aggressive can I be even against individual opponents. Like if I know that certain people take a pause between their swings a lot, like they never repost, if they parry my attack, I go for another swing. That is because of that specific opponent and what I've seen them do in the past. So I can get off two hits for every one hit that they do, and then I am so far above them because of the fact that stamina is so important in this game. At the beginning of a duel, if you go for a morph faint, or, or like a chamber morph faint, you have to imagine that you are already putting yourself at a severe stamina disadvantage. At the same time, you want to throw off the pacing of your opponent. And if there's any time where your opponent is going to be like the most focused, it's at the very beginning. You know, it, it kind of goes along with endurance. So something else that people don't really talk about is every swing that you do should have its own purpose. Like every swing that you do is because of a specific sequence that you've been going through with your opponent. Um, like ideally you want to do like every swing in a duel, like you're trying, you're looking for an opening. Like that's, that's what it, it turns into. And when you get to like the highest level of play, you're you're working really hard to try to find openings but typically it'll just turn into a stamina war because the second one person gets hit he's losing on stamina like 99 percent of the time if he gets hit he's losing on stamina there are some uh there's obviously some exceptions but like um if you guys have gone back and forth on parrying and attacking parrying and attacking the second that first person gets hit, as long as the other person stays calm and just keeps taking the parry battle back and forth, he's going to win because the other dude's lower on stamina. Unless he's, like, abusing faints, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I really appreciate you coming on the channel and, and making this video for all of us. I'm sure that the community will thank you for that. I sure benefited from a lot of the knowledge that you had to share, for and sure. it That's sounds probably. like you're just... An encyclopedia of Mord How knowledge and information and that we can absolutely touch on a lot more of these subjects in the future because I'm sure a lot of people will be craving more of this kind of stuff. I sure hope so. You know, getting more interest in this game and the more competitive side of the game is how it is going to become more entertaining. My current goal is to have no one team dominating the scene. I want everybody to go into almost every single game wondering who the hell is going to win and seeing a bunch of close games. Because obviously the closest games are going to be the most exciting ones. It's good to see a stomp every now and then, but knowing that it could go either way means so, so much more to the competitive scene, and that's what's going to make this shit pop off. If you're a caster and you know how to hype cast, please get a hold of us. That is something that we need right now. Like, if you know how to hype up a situation and you have a good understanding of Mordhau, please, you need to find a way to communicate with us, whether that be through the EFL Discord, whether that be through Knight's comments. If you have experience with shout casting, by all means, I can get you involved for tournaments and you can be part of what makes this game successful as an eSport. Oh my god, that toe drag though.